Look, he's on plenty of fish. Uh-oh. All right, besties, we are back with another Max episode because y'all missed him so much. This episode has been highly, highly requested both on YouTube. I also have a lot of people asking for it on Instagram. This is my Instagram. And I also have a lot of people asking for it on TikTok. While it is not a Pride Month episode, it's crazy and very messy. So we got to get into it. This is season seven, episode three, Kim and Matt. So like I said, Max, Max is back, besties. Y'all missed him so much. So you know we had to run it back. And both Neve and Max's shirts are truly killing it, so the episode is already off to a good start. The episode starts off with an email from Joseph, who lives in Sacramento, California, and he's reaching out on behalf of his ex-girlfriend, Kim, who he believes is being catfished. You don't find that suspicious? I don't give a fuck if my ex is being catfished. <laughs> that is not my problem. That's just not my problem. Joseph says that he recently found out that Kim has been talking to Matt online for the past five years, which means that Kim was cheating on Joseph with Matt. Trash. Lord have mercy, this is already messy the way that we like it, besties. Kim has never met Matt in person, of course, which is why they're writing into Catfish, and she's apparently not even 100% sure what he looks like. How the fuck are you cheating on your real life mans with your internet mans and you don't even know what he looks like? Wow. The pressure is getting worse. Not the thunder. Rain, you need to hold off for a minute because I'm trying to record. So Matt apparently lives in Florida, but he did live in Sacramento for the lot for a quick little hot little minute. But he and Kim never met, which to me lets me know that Kim is not a priority for him, no matter what he might say once he gets on the show. So they hop on a quick call with Joe and even Max waste absolutely no time accusing Joe of doing all of this just so that he can end up being with Kim in the end, like a weird catfish fairy tale. But Joe says that they are strictly friends. He just wants the best for her and she has a troubled past. So he really just wants to be some sort of stability in her life, which there's more to that, but you have to keep watching to find out what the more to that is. Cause it shocked the hell out of me. What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> but Joe says that either way, he just wants Kim to be happy, which I think is a really sweet sentiment. Joe then gives Kim a call. So now we have like phoneception going on because Joe is on the call with Neven Max. And while Joe is on the call with Neven Max, he's calling Kim. So he just basically tells her that Catfish is more than willing to meet up and is ready to help her. So she agrees, the guys hop off the call and they head over to meet Kim. They pull up at Kim's and she immediately gives them a warning that she's very shy and very nervous, but also like just looking at her, she doesn't give 20 year old to me. She doesn't give it 20 at all. But I think I said this in a couple of videos before and many of you were like dragging me being like, why are you talking about how, they old, how old they look? It's, just, it's a commentary video. I'm commentating on the stuff. Many of you besties pointed out that it's likely just due to their aesthetic, which makes them look a bit older. And I really remembered that. And I think that applies here in this situation for Kim. So they get right into things. And she says that she met Matt when she was 15 after he slid into her DMs, which is like he slid into your DMs and you're not like, what do you look like? Be fucking for real. All right. But they talk on the phone about once a week. And aside from that, it's just texting. So obviously they've never been on video chat. She says that they bonded over their shitty parents and Kim reveals that she once I kicked a cop in the nuts and went to juvenile detention for that. Wow. That seems completely unreasonable to me. I don't see why that resulted in a juvie stay whatsoever. Free our girl Kim. <laughs> They have tried to meet up twice, but she says that Matt bailed on the plans twice. Neiman and Max say that it's a good thing that she doesn't know what he looks like. And I personally think that that's a terrible thing. I don't see why that could possibly be a good thing, but whatever. So they then go to Matt's Facebook page and right away they get into their steamy sex, which is so wild to me because why is that the first thing that Catfish is going to see? That would be embarrassing for me. That would stress me out. I don't want anyone to see my sex unless I'm sending them to you. But also like, you don't know what he looks like, but y'all are sexting and like, are you sending him pictures too? Like what's tea? But Kim says that she needs to know the truth because she's ready to move down to Florida if this is legit. This girl is delusional. <sighs> I, child, let's just get, let's just move on because I, oh my God, oh my God. So Neve and Max get right into investigating, which let's see how they're going to do this because they literally have damn near zero information to go off of because Kim knows very little about him despite the fact that they've been talking for five years and she cheated on her real life mans with her online mans, but hey, 
just the way the cookie crumbles for some folks. So they start by searching up his phone number and it is in fact linked to someone named Matt who lives in Florida. They then go on his Facebook and they reach out to someone named Crystal who looks like his friend. So they just ask her to give them a call. They then search his Facebook name just like in Google and they find a Twitter with the same handle. Sidebar, since Musty Musk bought that site and changed the name, I'm very curious to know if anyone calls it by its new name or if we have collectively just decided that it's still going to be called Twitter because who the fuck's calling it X? But anyways, they go to look at some of Matt's pictures and his face is not visible in any of them. They then go back to the Google search and they see that Matt is on Plenty of Fish and he has a picture on that profile, which is very, very, very shady. Shady, shady boots. Who's that? Ooh. Like, totally fine, he's normal. But we're at this point, we're pretty sure that he is in Kissimmee, Florida. Crystal then calls and Neve gives her a quick little rundown and Crystal confirms that she knows Matt in real life. And she also says that Matt has never mentioned Kim, which is really embarrassing for Kim. But then she also drops some tea that Matthew apparently has an on and off girlfriend in Kissimmee. Oh Lord. A girl who is clearly not Kim. But also could Kim even be mad about this because you had a whole man's. Crystal also suggests that they talk to Matt's brother, Nick, to get some more information. So she gives them Nick's number and she sends them a picture of Crystal and Matt together. Whoa, whoa, she texted us a photo of them together. Which, okay, if you could give them Matt's brother's number, could you not give them Matt's number? Quickly. And confirm that that's Matt's number. What's not clicking? But also like Neve then says- He's a babe. Yeah. And. A matter of opinion, I think he's quite average looking. To somebody, I'm sure he is. I'm sure 12 year old Jada would have loved Matt. So Neve then calls Nick and quickly fills him in on everything that's been going on. And Nick says that he has never heard of anyone named Kim. And according to him, Matt is currently single. So no situationship, no on and off girlfriend, but they both still live at home with their parents. Nick says that the situation is weird because if they were dating for real, Matt would have been doing all he could to meet up with her. They would have never gotten to the point where now they're on catfish. They head back over to Kim and they immediately tell her that they're befuddled, which is not a good sign. In fact, that's like possibly the worst sign. They show her what they were able to find and she's just nervously smiling the whole time. She doesn't say anything. She then asks if, if it's okay if she takes a second and walks out and even Max look at each other like, what the hell is going on? and then Neve walks out to talk to her. And at this point to me, it's clear that Kim is just trying to regulate her emotions. She's very, very nervous. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with being very, very nervous, but I just question the, me personally, I question the decision to come on national TV, knowing that like it gives you a lot of anxiety and you're not comfortable. Like, why would you want to put yourself in such an uncomfortable position? That's just my thought process. Instead of just like moving on from this person who clearly doesn't want to meet you. No offense. Well, actually, um, take offense if you want to. You probably should. But Kim says that she's very, very happy because things are turning out better than she thought. Oh, Lord. Just hold your horses, Miss Girl, because we have over half the episode left. <laughs> As they head back inside, Neve tells her that it is exciting because the guy does seem legit and I just wish he wouldn't have given her false hope like that. Because at this point, we have no idea what we're walking into. But after they sit down, then they tell her about their conversation with Crystal and the apparent local girlfriend. When asked if she knew about this, Kim says nothing and just keeps her head down. So instead of waiting for an answer, Max fills the silence and just keeps talking. They tell her about their conversation with Nick and she starts sobbing before walking away, not saying anything still. She goes to cry in the bathroom and they go and they sit with her as she does. You okay? There's a lot of movement going on right now, okay? So they get off the floor, they head back to the table where Kim confirms that she does want to meet Matt, but she says she's terrified of heights and planes so she can't fly. So they're gonna see if Matt will come down to meet them. Again, it just seems like I, I, I'm just like questioning why you wanted to do this when so many things make you anxious, make you uncomfortable. Like obviously you're not feeling good in those moments when you're anxious and uncomfortable. That's your body being like not regulated. That's your body being like, I'm, I'm not good in this situation. Why are you pulling me? I'm right. But when Kim sees a picture of Matt, she says that he's not ugly and Neve says that he's stunning. I think he's stunning to be honest, just very handsome before heading outside to call Matt. I feel like this is the first episode where I have seen Neve simp over a man instead of lusting over a woman. A beautiful, thick black woman, might I add. <laughs> 
But Matt answers and he's super confused as to why Kim wrote into the show. And me personally, I'm also confused as to why Kim wrote into the show. But he basically says that, that it's not easy to pick up and meet because he has a lot going on right now. Who's asking you that? Neve does what Neve normally does. He ignores everything that Matt had just said and asks if Matt will come to Sacramento. Matt agrees, so they get off the phone. And it's like, if you were just gonna agree to come in the end, why did you have to do this whole charade? I don't know if I'm free. I don't know if I could make it. Y'all yeah, come. It just wasted like 30 seconds of my time for what? Actually, this whole conversation was like two minutes. I just condensed it down to two sentences because this is all that really matters. You're welcome. But Neve then heads back inside to deliver the good news. And when Kim finds out, she doesn't say much at all. Like she hasn't been saying much at all this whole episode, but the crew then leaves for the day. As Neve and Max are in the car driving to wherever they're going, I don't know where they're going, probably a hotel. But Max says that- She is a nervous Nelly. And Neve says that based on her actions, it's unclear if Matt truly bailed or if she's the one who bailed. And honestly, I love it when Neve thinks, when he puts that brain to use. I like it. So the next morning they pull up at Kim's and they see that Joe is there. I was like, sir, what are you doing here? So apparently Kim called him in a panic last night because Kim has not been fully honest or transparent about some things. You need to leave. It's like, oh God. I'm not surprised because she hasn't been doing a whole lot of talking. So if she did have something to hide, it would have been fairly easy for her to hide it. He says that he's just essentially there for moral support while she comes clean, which is very nice of him because he didn't have to do that. So Kim walks out of the house with a baby. What is this? Whose goddamn white baby is that? We then find out that it's her and Joe's child, which is fucking crazy. It's uh, our kid. What? Yeah. Okay, Joe says that he didn't mention Norma, the baby, because Kim wasn't sure if she wanted their daughter to be on the show or not. He kind of left the ball in her court, which again, seems like Joe is a really good baby daddy, a really good supportive co-parent. And I really love that for Kim because it seems like her and the baby really need that sort of stability. But now him being an ex and writing into the show on her behalf makes a lot more sense to me because he's like, I just want you to get the fuck out of this situation. Focus on our baby, focus on our daughter, focus on yourself. It's a cute ass house. But we then find out that Matt also doesn't know about Norma because Matt told Kimberly, I don't know if her name's Kimberly, I'm just assuming it's Kimberly, told Kimberly that he doesn't like kids and he doesn't want kids. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Girl, we, I can't stand a cheater, I can't stand a liar, I can't stand a manipulator, and I cannot stand a person who has kids who voluntarily gets into a committed relationship, develops feelings for somebody who's like, yeah, fuck them kids. How are you gonna do that to your baby? You're sick, you're sick and twisted. But also like, why would you even be willing to entertain this man? And why would you be willing to relocate your whole life, assuming you're planning on taking your daughter with you for a man who doesn't like nor want kids? He's made that very clear to you. I swear the people who come on this show just have peas for brain. They just got rocks jangling up in there and I hate that for them and I hate that even more for baby Norma. We then find out that Joe had no idea that Kim was planning on moving to Florida with the baby and he says that he absolutely doesn't want that. You don't want her moving to Florida? Oh no, 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 no. Right. And I absolutely wouldn't want that either. So Max then breaks down all the red flags in the situation. Won't send you a picture. Doesn't want to have kids. This is turning into more and more of a bad idea. Joe then takes cute little Norma and heads out. We then find out that one of the times Matt was ready and present and was meeting up with Kim, she went into labor. <laughs> So essentially she bailed, but it's like you went into labor. So did you really bail? But also, I don't know. It's so crazy to me that like she was about to pop, give birth, and she was going to have her side piece, her side dude mans pull up on her at work. Trash. You're real fucked up for that, I must say. So her delusional ass then says that she hopes that Matt will be a good father and she believes that he's a good fit for her. He doesn't like kids. He doesn't want kids. You have a kid and a baby daddy. I think he'll be a good father. He doesn't like kids. How are you a good father if you don't like kids? Taking Delulu to the whole next level, the level that nobody needed it to be taken to, to be completely honest with you. Neve then sends Matt a message with an address and they head over to the spot. On the way over, Kim asks Neve and Matt for advice on how to reveal her child like girl, girly pop. They cannot help you with that because their children have never been a secret. The second Laura, Neve's wife, got pregnant it was announced to everybody. The babies have never been a secret, so they can't help you. What the fuck are you talking? Oh my God. Ugh. Then they pull up at the park. They see Matt is waiting for them, so they walk right over. Oh, who is this? Ah! 
So we then see that Matt looks quite literally exactly like the picture showed us. And it's like, you're not a bad looking dude. I don't understand why you didn't just show her a picture of yourself because you were seeing pictures of her, but that's neither here nor there at this point because Kim has a whole ass baby. So what Matt looks like is irrelevant. And I, oh. But Kim immediately just freaks out. She doesn't say hi, she doesn't introduce herself. She just rapid fires out some questions. So, um, I do have a few questions. <laughs> Matt says that he does not have a girlfriend and he says that he doesn't like being in front of the camera so that's why he hasn't sent pictures of himself. But it's like, you don't like being in front of the camera and then you're okay with coming on Catfish. I feel like I just struggle to understand how if you're uncomfortable in front of, not the thunder, Chalby, please be quiet, please. We're not doing that right now. We having story time, come back later. I feel like I just struggle to understand how being uncomfortable in front of a camera means that you then are comfortable in front of a camera when MTV shows up with one or multiple. I don't know how many cameras they have on site. Max asks what the holdup has been and Matt says that he's just a secretive person while Kim just is moving all around. This girl cannot stand still. Matt says that he cares about her and it would suck if something happened to her. Everybody's so creative. Child. <laughs> This is how I know y'all be having some surface level ass relationships because what kind of answer is this? It would suck if something happened to you. I personally believe that it would suck if bad if something bad happened to most people. Like you watching this, it would suck if something bad happened to you. So if I'm supposed to be in like this personal, intimate, committed relationship with someone and that's all they have to say about me, like what the hell are you even talking about right now? Kim asks if she can take a second and even Max are like, no. No, come back yeah, here. Stay here. Yeah. yeah, you can do it. <laughs> What the fuck? No, stand here. We're here for you. What do you mean? Can you take a second? Matt says that the hysterics are nice and that this is interesting. The hysterics are nice. Come on. And I'm just like, wow, he's already over it and he's been dealing with it for two seconds. We've been dealing with it for a whole episode. So Kim just walks away anyways and she goes and sits down in the grass before making a joke about fattening Matt up because she doesn't like skinny boys, she says. Which I like him thick. I like him thick with four Ks. But Neve says that we just have to let Matt and Kim be weird together. Kim asks if Matt still doesn't like children and Matt asks why. And Kim then says that she has an almost two-year-old daughter and then tries to blame Matt for her dishonesty. Like, yeah, you said you didn't like kids, so I didn't want to tell you. Bitch, if I said I don't like kids and you know you have a kid, end whatever you got going on with me. The hell? What about that? What about that? It just seems very manipulative and I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Like if I'm, say I'm seeing somebody and we're dating, we're exclusive, we're in love, and a year down the road, they're like, yeah, I have a child. End of the relationship, <laughs> end of the relationship. But he's been talking to her for five years and he had no clue she had a baby. Kim's crazy ass. <laughs> she then asks if Matt wants to be her daughter's godfather, which is so insane to me. Would you like to be her godfather? And Matt is like, girl, I've never met her. And I didn't know she existed until two seconds ago. Hold up, I've never even met her. I'm just now finding out about her. So Max then intervenes and he prompts Kim to tell Matt how she feels about Matt. And she asks if she has to do it with everyone there. This girl is delusional. Miss girl, did you contact Catfish or did Catfish contact you? Quickly. Cause what, do you have to do it with everyone there? Yes. <laughs> yes you do. But I guess to give Kim the idea that she's not being watched by so many people, her and Matt walk over to a picnic bench to sit and talk, but they're also both mic'd up. So like we can still hear everything that's going on and obviously cameras are still shooting them. But Kim says that she has been in love with Matt for five years. I guess I just have huge feelings for you. While nervously squirming around. Again, this is crazy because you had a whole man's, you had a whole baby with this man's. You're probably telling him you loved him too. At the beginning, as soon as we found out that Kim was cheating on Joe with Matt, I already knew it wasn't gonna end well for her, but now I know it's really not gonna end well for her. Cheaters truly never prosper on this show, and I love that. Almost nothing makes me happier. <laughs> Oh, how I love being a hater. But Matt says that he's at a complete loss for words before Kim gets mad and says this is pointless and heads back over to where Neve, Max, and the rest of the crew are. At this point, I've decided that I don't really like Kim's behavior. I don't really like her attitude at all because it's very much giving you're manipulative, you're controlling, and you're mad that he didn't immediately confess his love for you, so you're ready to leave. Kim then says that she wants to see the water and she takes off for a run while Neve and Max talk to Matt. <laughs> Matt then makes a smart ass comment, which definitely made me giggle. Every single time I see it, it makes me giggle. Don't fall in the river. 
But Matt says that he can't decide if he wants something romantic with Kim because of everything he just found out. So I'm sure in his mind, he was ready to come and like pursue a relationship with her now. But after finding out that you have a kid, you're very manipulative and you can't seem to just have a conversation with me. I, I wouldn't be able to decide if I wanted to be in a relationship with you either. So Max tells Matt that before he leaves, Kim deserves a clear answer on where they stand. And at this point, I honestly don't believe that Kim deserves anything. But that's just my opinion. Sprinkle, sprinkle. But then they all head out with plans to meet up again the next day. In the car, Neve straight up says that they're both awkward, which took me out because it's true. But did you have to say it like that? Well, you're both awkward. <sighs> so the next day, Neve, Max, and Matt get in the car and they head to Kim's. They make jokes about being a godfather, which is clearly not at all amusing to Matt. And I don't think I would find it amusing either. But also like, did you even ask Joe about this? Because I think people don't really understand what godparent is. Like, that means if something happens to Kim and Joe, Matt's first in line to take the baby after he told you he doesn't like kids. Like, that doesn't... Ugh, girl. Wow. The stress and the sweat is too much. So when they get to Kim's, Kim walks out of the house with Norma, and Norma gives Matt some knuckles, and then Matt gives her a gift, which is really sweet. And Joe is on the way to get her, apparently, which this should be very awkward. They then just all sit in silence, which is very, very awkward. Matt says that he's not ready to engage with the baby, which is more than fair because he told you explicitly he doesn't like kids. Joe then picks Norma up and then the foursome head to a little ice cream spot before Neve and Max leave Matt and Kim alone. Matt asks where they're going from here. I think he was just trying to get her feel for what she wanted before he said what he wanted. And Kim just snaps at him, tells him to stop staring at her. Stop staring at me. I'm just asking, where are we going from here? And tells him to answer first. Lord have mercy girl but matt says that he doesn't want a relationship which clearly upsets kim and matt says that he is okay with being norma's godfather and he is okay with helping her if she needs it but he makes it explicitly clear he wants to just be friends nothing more than that thank god i think it's nice that he's willing to help with norma and like be her godfather i guess i still think it's weird but i like how he made it super clear like i'm not romantically interested in you anymore Kim doesn't say anything, and then they head out. Neve summarizes this whole encounter by saying how weird it was. Well, that was weird. <laughs> In our three month follow up, Kim says that she's focused on working, going to school and being a mom. She said that she wants to be a surgeon. I don't know, homegirl could not stand still during like a simple conversation. So I don't know how she's gonna be a surgeon. However, I do hope that she's able to figure that out and that ends up working out for her if that's what she really wants to do. But Max then makes a quick whip about if she tried to do this to mend her broken heart. She says that her and Matt talk every once in a while and she has now mo she's moved on with her love life and she is now in a relationship with someone she knows in real life, someone who she kind of thought of as a friend but then reconsidered it and now they're together and he obviously knows about Norma. I feel like Norma is such, I don't know, I think it's a cute name but I feel like I couldn't imagine calling a baby Norma. Like in my mind, that's just the name of like someone's great grandma. Which I'm like, damn girl, you moved on quick. You moved on quick. Please don't cheat on this one. I am big messy, big messy. But they then add Matt to the call and he says that he's definitely more social with Norma. So he feels like a godfather for real. Kim then reveals that she's about to go and visit Matt in Florida. And Matt says that he has a lot of stuff for Norma when they see each other again. And I bet you, I bet you when they're down there, they get to bump in uglies, but that's just my take on it. And that's the end of the episode. What a weird ass episode. But besties, here is the highly requested episode of Kim and Matt, where she asks a stranger to be the godfather of her baby, a stranger who doesn't like babies and doesn't want babies. So that was definitely something. <laughs> Make sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. I don't like Kim. I think Matt is weird. I feel like I'm still struggling to understand why she wanted to come on the show. I hope she's happy. I hope she's thriving. I hope she's doing well. I hope her baby's doing well. I just think it's really good that she has a consistent, stable figure in Joe for Norma and herself because Joe really seems like he'd be there for her no matter what because there's no way I'm your baby daddy. We have a kid together. You cheated on me and I'm going to try and help you meet the guy that you cheated on me with. I'm not doing that. My exes don't even exist to me, so I would never go this far. But Joe is a really good guy for that. And Kim should be very, very grateful that she has such a good support system in Joe alone. I thank you so very much for being here. Make sure to like, make sure to comment, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're aware of every single time that I upload. If there's another episode you wanna see, make sure to leave it down in the comments. If there's another show that you'd like me to cover, make sure to leave it down in the comments. You guys have been requesting that I branch out. So uh, let's see what happens next. Let's see what you see from me next. 
But if you made it all the way to the end of the video, make sure to leave a pink heart of your choosing to confuse the people who didn't watch all the way to the end and show that you are a bestie for real, okay? I love y'all, I appreciate y'all so much, and I'll see you in the next video. It's hot as balls.